big news from AMD today. They're delaying the 3950X, it's for the AM4 16 core, until November. But, other big news, Threadripper is out in November. But what if we didn't have to wait? What if we could have Threadripper Lite today? I mean, don't you want to know how Threadripper is going to perform? I mean, kind of, kind of, sort of? Switch your eyes, clickbait. Let's find out. This is the Epic 7402P. It's a 24 core processor. The P means it's designed for single socket, which lets AMD charge less than a dual socket configuration. And boy, howdy, this thing is fast. And you might be thinking, why are you talking about Threadripper? What are you opening with about Threadripper when this is really an epic server CPU and a gigabyte server motherboard and our lovely Be Quiet case, which actually is quiet. It's on right now and you can, you can barely hear it. This is the lower bound for what I would expect a 24 core Threadripper system to be able to perform. This thing is beastly, it is ungodly. It is uh, not normal, I think, to try to run a server motherboard like this as a workstation. But that's what we're gonna do, or that's what actually I've done and I've already done all the testing. And my goodness, Threadripper is coming and it is gonna completely take over the high-end desktop market. And, you know, not to like talk about market forces or anything like that, this socket for Threadripper is basically the same as what AMD has for the server platform. Now, the Threadripper motherboards are gonna be a lot more bling, there's gonna be RGB. This is, you know, relatively understated green. It's gonna go in your rack mount server and stay there forever. This is designed to go in a 2U rack mount server, so it's a little big. In fact, it normally does not fit in the Darkbase Pro 900 case. I had to go a little off script and modify the case. So there it is, the Darkbase Pro 900 right behind me. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess, it's completely disassembled, and a server motherboard will not fit in the Darkbase Pro 900. The drive cage is in the way. Not to worry, I can cut a piece of wood to fit. Now, I could use a piece of metal, but I'm in a hurry, it's easier to work with wood, and wood is going to be perfectly structural. One thing though, the case does sort of depend on the motherboard being screwed in for structural support, so just a minor little bit of movement, you can see the motherboard tray is kind of shifting a little bit. It's not good. I'm going to have to screw it in, I'm going to use wood screws, it's fine. Do you have to do like a, a dado style cut or like a pocket cut? I don't know, I'm not a woodworker, but you need to notch the wood a little bit so that the motherboard tray will sit where it's supposed to. Normally it screws in from the back. The way that I've cut the wood, it's gonna screw in from the front. But that was the easiest way to do this with the fewest number of cuts possible. You can also use the 3D printer and print a few guides to make the cuts more accurate. And also to have things that the motherboard will snap into and, and mounts and spacers and stuff like that so that we can do it really professionally. I've got two GPUs in here right now, an RTX 2080, as well as a Radeon 5700 XT. All of our benchmarks on Windows were done with the Radeon 5700 XT. I've also got a liquid HHHL, it's 1.2 million IOPS per second NVMe drive in there. Well, it's actually like four NVMe drives sandwiched into one half height, half length card. And then I've also got a PCI Express by four gigabyte RS NVMe. This thing is ridiculous. 24 cores of performance, 48 threads, 256 gigabytes of registered error correcting memory running at 2666. The timings aren't the best on that, but this thing can manage 3.35 gigahertz flat out on all 24 cores. And the Intermax Liquitec 2 cooler, a tower cooler, could keep it all cool without really any headache, I think. Most of the workloads that I ran were well above three gigahertz. Even things like Premiere rendering and really AVX heavy workloads, not really a problem. 3.25 gigahertz to 3.15 gigahertz, basically across the board on all 24 cores. No boost shenanigans here. Every core hits 3.35 gigahertz. This is incredible for web servers or any kind of workload where there's gonna be kind of a lot of CPU cores, kind of busy all the time. I don't know because I haven't tested the 32 or the 48 or the 64 core CPUs, but I suspect that somewhere in the 24 to 32 core neighborhood is gonna be the sweet spot for Threadripper based on heat production and everything else. During my benchmark runs, I would see the cores operating at one to 1.1 volts, which is, Kind of shocking considering that, you know, we see uh, Ryzen 9 3900X spiking up to 1.5 uh, 1. volts in heavily 
uh, you know, heavily single thread workloads where you've got one or two cores that are just, you know, bursting to their 4.6 gigahertz top end clock. This thing, I mean, there's a big difference between 3.3 and 4.6 gigahertz, but I feel like that the time that AMD is going to take to make Threadripper go to around 4 gigahertz, uh, we're going to see a voltage increase and some other stuff. But in terms of raw performance, even at 3.35 gigahertz, this system is incredible. It is incredible performance. Please keep in mind as you look through the results that we're using registered error correcting memory. It's not the fastest. The latency is going to be over 100 nanoseconds because, well, it's 256 gigs, which is a lot of it, which offsets some of the speed, but it's not the fastest because I don't have any 3200 error correcting memory that will work in this platform yet. So you'll see some things in like the Puget, like the playback benchmark in Premiere is a little lower than it should be compared to the 3900X. And that's just down to memory latency. And that will not be a problem in Threadripper. With comparison systems, a 7980XE, a 3600X and a 3900X, everything had a 2080, except for this thing, which had a 5700XT. The 2080, like mixing PCI Express, Maybe a little problematic. That's a story for another day. If you want a full review of this motherboard in an actual 2U chassis that it's designed for, Serve the Home has a great review of the Gigabyte chassis that this is designed to go into. Yes, it does do IPMI. Yes, you get the OCP mezzanine slot so you can install a 10 gig or a 40 gig adapter. If you go full NVMe, it uses almost all 128 PCI Express lanes for NVMe interfaces if you want to build like a ridiculous storage server. But you don't have to. You could just go nuts like I did. I mean, I've got two GPUs in here and I've still got five slots free. Although you gotta sort of finagle things around a little bit to really get that to work the way that it's supposed to. Cause by eight or by 16, it's like X16, 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 X16. Not exactly. Now with the 2990, AMD had 32 cores on the Windows desktop, but let me tell you, Windows was not ready for 32 cores on the desktop in that scenario. The 2990 in Linux, is glorious, it is a sight to behold. It is an incredible, incredible machine. Just, it purrs like a kitten. But the Numa node thing, like the software engineering required to do that, Microsoft really didn't step up to the plate and handle that. They're gonna have to do that because Intel can't manage more than 28 cores in a single Numa node. So, ha <laughs> ha. Threadripper does give you some advantages like higher clock memory. Uh, the motherboards have more onboard features where you'd have to use some add-in cards here. So there are some differences like that, but already the 24 core, this 24 core CPU in general will outperform the 32 core 2990WX in most workloads. It'll, it'll meet or beat it in most workloads, even under Linux. Now under Windows, it's a completely different story. The, uh, the Threadripper 2990WX under Windows is severely gimped by Windows. Now Intel has got a refresh coming up as well. They're gonna refresh and it's, rumor has it, it's gonna be on the X299 socket, same as existing CPUs. It's gonna be our third refresh on that socket. Wow, Intel seems like they're trying to get a lot of mileage out of the X299 socket. Are we gonna see up to 28 cores on that socket? Well, maybe, but Intel's gonna have some problems on its hand. This is basically the server socket for AMD. I mean, I know it's a little different, but Threadripper and Epic, same socket, same functionality. 64 lanes versus 128 lanes for Epic and last gen Threadripper. There's rumors that there's gonna be another Threadripper that has 128 lanes and even more memory channels, but can't substantiate that. We're not talking about that. I just, it's like replicating this performance, even in a four channel configuration, it is beastly. And you look at that and you look at what Intel has on the server side, like the new Mac Pros, Socket 3647, that's a server socket. It's a big socket like the AMD sockets for lots of peripheral connectivity. On the Mac Pros, you've got 64 PCI Express lanes, just like Threadripper. And you need to look at the higher end enterprise market and there are some higher end enterprise Intel CPUs, but they're not really available on the high end desktop side. Whereas AMD sort of eschews that middle of the market part and just says, okay, we're going to relabel, reprice, reclock our server parts and offer those on the desktop. Not to say that AMD hasn't done a lot of work to be able to support that. I mean, that's, that's a big deal. It's not like they're just slapping a different sticker on there. There's a lot of qualification and engineering that goes into that. AIB partners put in a lot of work in the motherboards to make them appealing to desktop users because again, 
putting a server motherboard in a desktop case, even a big one like the Darkbase Pro 900 is not an optimal situation. It's just, you're not supposed to do that. And it, if, if I didn't crank up the airflow in this case, it would actually overheat because I mean, you look at the VRM situation and it's like, that's not, that's not like a desktop board, but it's not overclocked and you know, all that kind of stuff. So Intel saves money because they don't have to go through the complexity of the big server socket and AIB partners save on motherboard production costs, but you, the consumer, don't save. Those CPUs are not cheaper. The 7402 processor is $1,200 and it runs circles around the $1,700 desktop part and runs circles around the Xeon counterpart that's more than twice as expensive. That's just, I mean, what a time to be alive for competition. So whatever the X299 refresh is that's coming, I just don't see how it could compete with the Threadripper CPUs that are coming. Like, I mean, even just things like NVMe RAID. NVMe RAID with PCI Express 4 is a truly glorious thing. I mean, it's not for everybody. And you know, your gaming workload, it's not gonna make a, a bit of a difference. But if you're a computer power user doing just completely insane things with virtual machines and you know, your, your entire life lives on a machine like this, uh, it's nice. And on the Intel X299 platform, all of those M.2 slots go through the chipset, meaning that all of those slots combined can only do at most four gigabytes per second. Well, a single PCI Express 4 NVMe can do north of five so if you're gonna do RAID, I mean, we're getting like nine gigabytes per second, and it's just not possible without using CPU PCI Express lanes on the Intel platform. If this truly is a preview of what's coming in Threadripper for the market, the high-end desktop market, AMD is gonna own it. They're gonna devour it whole. Better connectivity, better speed, better compatibility, and it's not just like better speed by a little bit, it's better speed by a lot. This is AMD's server platform on the desktop. It's not a middle of the road, toe in the water, it's gonna cost more, but not as much as a $10,000, you know, Platinum 8180 Intel CPU, but still gonna cost a lot. You know, it's a higher margin part because it's high-end desktop. No, it's just, this This issues all of that. It's like, here it is, put up or shut up. And that's really what Threadripper should be. Granted, this is an epic server. This is not designed for desktop use. Everything about it is not designed for desktop use. But if you look past that and you look at the numbers and you see how this performs and those benchmark results, those jaw dropping benchmark results, if this is a preview of the worst case scenario for Threadripper, there's a lot of people that are gonna be very, very happy and very excited with what AMD is doing in the high-end desktop market in 2019 and into 2020. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This is Threadripper Lite. I basically uh, acting a little bit like a crack addict here, except instead of crack, it's compute capacity. And this is gonna have to tide me over until Threadripper. I'm just gonna pretend it's Threadripper. It's close enough. <laughs> it's so glorious.